Hello and welcome. In this video we're going to pick up where we left off in the previous one where we discussed the mapped translation. Uh, this time we are going to visit a second translation technique that we will look at in this course which is a slight variation on the mapped translation and that's the mapped translation where we consider participation. So we call it mapped with participation consideration. And this takes the circumstances, here's the, here's the crux of mapped with total partial. We have a set of circumstances where in mapped we would in fact map a relationship to an entity in terms of our table translation. And let me uh, refresh your memory about that with an example. So if we have a cardinality relationship like this uh, given instance of x can have multiple instances of y, given instance of y can have associated with it one and only one instance of x. We learned when we went through the mapped translation technique that we can do this and have a table y with y number as the primary key and x number as the foreign key. So we take the primary key of the other entity participating in the relationship and bring it over into the table that's that's a number sign right there although it's hard to tell bring it over into the other table as a foreign key and by so doing we are capturing the nature of the relationship in the y side table and this is perfectly fine on the n side it would not be okay on the one side we know and so there's the review of mapped. Now, mapped with total partial ask the following question. On the side that you were going to map, so we're worried about this participation because remember unlike cardinality which has a look across convention, participation has a look here convention and so when we're interested in the participation of the y entity we're looking right here, oops except that that erased. So is this participation full? If it is, do exactly what you're going to do before if this is full. If or total. If this is optional or partial, like so, then we don't do this. We instead do this and this. So is inside entity participation period full slash mandatory if so treat as mapped if not treat as stable okay that's that's the essence of it right here. Now, we can also do the one-to-one. -one. So with one-to-one -one relationship, there are a couple of options on the table. You can, based strictly on the cardinality, you can map like this, you can map like this, or you could take the whole thing and map both entities and the relationship together at once. It's the only instance where you can do that. If we're not looking at participation, any of those options is just fine. But guess what? We are looking at participation. So, same deal. If this participation, the x side participation, is full, then we can do at least this mapping. If this participation is full, then we can do at least this mapping. And if, as is the case here, both participations are full, then we can include everything together. But we are doing this including everything together based not just on cardinality, but also on participation. And so let's work through the example. If both of these participations were full, we would have an x, x y table, we would call it probably, and it would have the x number, primary key, the y number, and we could pick either one of these to be the primary key. X number could be primary key because we know there's only ever going to be one instance of Y. Or we could say Y number was primary key. 
Uh, we don't need to concatenate or combine both of them, though, because either one or the other will assure uniqueness for every instance of the record from every other. And so there we have all of them together. No foreign key. It's just information that's all contained together in one table. But as soon as one of these, one, oh, that was the wrong bit to erase. Hang on here. Uh, actually, no. Let me get rid of the circles. And let me say, as soon as one of these participations is optional or partial, like this, we no longer can involve x in the combined. x has to stand by itself. And these two will be included. And so we would have an x table with x number and whatever other attributes related to x. And we would have a y table with y number and also x number as a foreign key and then whatever other attributes are related to y and it would result in this instead and that's being driven by participation okay so there's the rules and that's good if you get that you pretty much have everything you need but let's talk about the why if you understand the why then you really understand this business a lot and that can be quite important as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so we have a one-to-many relationship. What we're going to work through here is the consequences of doing the mapping in the absence of worrying about participation. Okay, so say we have a department. Department has employees. Okay, given a department has at most many employees, a given employee can have, and how about works for, for the relationship name. A given employee can work for at most one department. Uh, let's say a department has to participate in the employees, in the works for relationship, or works for employees relationship, which means there cannot be a department that has zero employees. But let's say there are plenty of employees who are not currently associated with the department. So this cardinality will remain single line and it is optional. It is optional for employees to have a department. Okay, So in the map we would just go like this, right? And this. And our schema would look as follows. We'd have departments easy because there's no relationship or anything. So department would be D number. I'm making these up. Department name, department location, etc. Whatever other information we're interested in capturing about department. Employees, employee, would be SSN as the primary key. We would, because we're mapping this relationship, we're going to bring the foreign key over here and do department number. Okay? And that's a foreign key. Give it the asterisk. And then we have ename, phone, salary whatever other information we're interested in capturing about employees. Okay, so here is the problem that motivates the mapped with participation consideration approach. Let's look at an example. We're just going to abbreviate the social security number instead of its nine digits to one. So if employee one works in no department, employee one, well, I have to say employee one works in department two, and that's Biff and his phone number is 215 dot 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 and his salary is 39k and so on okay that's fine no problem no sweat biff is good to go but let's say susie she doesn't have an apartment lots of employees don't have a department then what are you going to get you're going to get a big old f fashion null value for the foreign key it's not a violation to have a null value as a foreign key it's not a catastrophe but it's messy and it has performance implications and it has semantic implications. It's not ideal, all else equal. And so that's, I think we said Susie and 215 whatever and 42,000 and so forth. So we could have tons and tons of, empl of employees who have null values for all of these department numbers because every time somebody doesn't work for a department, they are going to have a null value for this foreign key. Now, if we decide not to do this mapping, 
like so, because we are doing mapped with participation leads to this, then looks how, look how that changes. We'll still have the department name, that'll be exactly the same. The employee name number, the employee uh, relationship that is, excuse me, will just be the employees itself. So it won't have any foreign keys. That's, that's, that'll be empty. That won't be there. And we'll get rid of all these. So we'll get rid of all those messy null values, right? However, we will also have a works for table. And that will have any relationship is going to have as its primary key in a mapped translation technique. This is mapped or mapped with total partial. The primary keys of the participating entities, we go up here, primary key of department, D number, primary key of employees, uh, social security number. So we'll have D number, comma, SSN, and they're both primary keys, they're both foreign keys, and what happens is every time there is an instance of an employee working in a department, um, like, well, Susie was null, but Biff worked for apartment, department two, they're not, they're not gonna be here, but we're gonna pull them into here and say, okay, in department two, we had social security number one, that's Biff, and so he'll get an entry in this table. Uh, but what happens with Susie? Susie, no, what does that mean? No entry. If Susie doesn't have a darn department, we don't make an entry in the works for department, in the works for table. So uh, there will be no null values here. And every time there is a pairing of an employee and a department, then we will create a new entry in this table. And so we will have entries like two and one, and, and who else works in department two? Along with Biff, there might be, you know, 47 and two and 39. What, you know, whoever happens to work in whichever department, all the departments, what you will never ever see, ever, is a null value in this works for table. And so that is what we are looking to achieve with the mapped with partial consideration, and that's exactly what we get. So there's the benefit. What's the cost? I hope you're yelling at me, although I can't hear you. The cost is more tables, which in turn means worse performance. And I would say, yes, that's excellent. Good for you. Take the rest of the night off. That's exactly right. More tables, worse performance, no null FKs. And keep in mind, in terms of worse performance, still not as bad as stable. Okay? So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The comparison between mapped and mapped with total partial. And if you've gotten this far, you're doing swell because stable translation is pretty much super easy. Uh, basically, every two dimensional object that you draw in your entity relationship diagram, whether it be a, a rectangle and an entity or a, a diamond and a relationship, will get its own table. So that's very straightforward to apply. It doesn't matter what the participation is, and it doesn't matter what the cardinality is. So we'll run through an example of that just for grins, but there's nothing terribly tough about that. If you got mapped, and now a map with partial consider with participation consideration, you're golden. And I hope you are. If you're not, uh, run through this again if you'd like. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Study hard, and I will see you online. Thanks. <laughs>